These are the iPhone 15s. Apple talked about how they're the most power efficient phones ever, including one claim that said they were up to three times more power efficient than their competitors. But what they didn't mention is what that means for battery life. So we're gonna go through a normal day of use to see how these new iPhones stack up. And while that happens, there's a few things about the batteries here that we need to talk about. So first thing in the morning, some breakfast and TikTok. I'm disappointed in myself. <laughs> and let's just quickly go over what phones we're testing here. So first, the four new iPhones, the 15 Pro Max, which is now $1199, the $999 15 Pro, the $899 iPhone 15 Plus, and then the $799 base iPhone 15. And then as well as seeing how these new phones stack up against each other, we're also gonna be able to get a really cool bit of perspective because we have the iPhone 14 Pro Max to see how the very best phone from this year will compare to the best phone from last year. We have the base 14 to see how the base iPhones have changed from year to year. And then of course, the 13 Pro Max, simply because that phone is the current world champion on the Mist Who's the Boss battery test rankings. So it's just there in case we break the record. All right, breakfast over. And at this point, I'll normally start getting ready for the day with my favorite Spotify playlist. And this is quite an exciting result so far because the 15 Pro Max is in first place and it's trading blows with the current king, the 13 Pro Max. I would say that I care more about the battery on these iPhone 15s than I have on any other iPhone I've tested before. For the simple fact that this is the first time that it's not just about you. Thanks to the long overdue USB-C port, which can not just receive, but give power. You can, for the first time on an iPhone, use any extra juice that you might have to charge your earphones, to charge your watch, or just other people's phones. Which means that it's not really the case anymore that as soon as you get a day's worth of battery that's plenty, I'll take every drop I can get. Okay, so we are two hours in now. Probably time I do some work. So this is ChatGPT4. It's the most current version of ChatGPT. Let's ask it to do our work for us. <laughs> if you haven't played around with GPT-4, by the way, very fun tool. Like, just as a joke, I'm asking it right now to give a hundred reasons why cats are better than dogs, and it's doing it. So looking at the current percentages, what's very exciting here is that the 15 Pro Max is just now ever so slightly edging out every single other phone on this test. What's not as exciting is that the smaller Pro is in last place. We're gonna dig into this in a minute because I have a theory, but for now, time for a Zoom meeting with myself. Seven times. Yeah, I normally sit next to these phones whenever we're battery testing, just making notes and nursing them like children. Okay, so why would the iPhone 15 Pro be performing worse than the iPhone 15? And more concerningly, the iPhone 14? Well, firstly against the iPhone 15, I think part of it is just that Apple has made the iPhone 15s better for battery life. And based on the spec sheet, you actually have this weird situation where it seems like the base 15 also has a bigger battery capacity than the 15 Pro. The thing that the Pro has going for it is the ProMotion display, which has the ability to increase the phone's refresh rate all the way up to 120 hertz, but importantly for battery, to dial it all the way down to 10 hertz when the app you're in does doesn't need to be refreshing constantly. But because in this test so far, every app we've been in has had some sort of significant movement happening on screen at all times, we haven't been able to reap the benefits of that. But expect that to change as we go on. Okay, after a two hour call with seven errands, I need a break. So let's open up the Headspace Meditation app. And I wanna explain another factor that I think is affecting the 15 Pros. Well, obviously one thing is Dynamic Island. The 14 and the 13 Pro Max, they don't have to worry about it. I'd imagine it's not a massive battery drain, but at the same time, I'd be very surprised if it isn't contributing to at least some of the difference here, because it's essentially one extra process that has to be running in the background at all times. But what I think is the bigger thing is that the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max specifically are being powered by a brand new chipset, the A17 Pro. The fact that it's a next generation three nanometer chip should mean pretty large power efficiency improvements. That's the impression that I got when I watched the event, especially since Apple explicitly mentioned that the iPhone 15 Pros had the most efficient CPU ever, and that the efficiency cores in the chip, which run when you're not doing anything particular particularly demanding, are three times more efficient than the competition. But then clearly in practice, the battery gain is not as much as we initially thought it would be. Just because a lot of the extra headroom generated by the efficiency is erased by the push to get more performance out of the chip. Now let's just quickly move on to cameras, which is where I spend a lot of my time recording. Now this hit to power efficiency is not my ideal. Like I was saying earlier that with these phones in particular, I want that battery. But what does make me feel slightly better about this is that it looks like the battery life of the 15 series is still looking better than the battery life of the 14 series. The 15 Pro Max is beating the 14 Pro Max and the 13 Pro Max, mind you. And then the base 15 is absolutely destroying the base 14. And also just the fact that for the first time, it looks like Apple's making a big push to try and create this exclusive lineup of console games that will also play on these iPhone 15 Pros. There's only four games that have been officially promised so far, but if that gets delivered on in a big way, 
then that would be one of the few things that would make me okay with them prioritizing the bump in graphics power instead of pushing for endurance from the last generation. I suppose the other thing to bear in mind as you move on to YouTube, which is usually where our content ends up after we film, is that while it's easy to get caught up in the chips and how much they're improving from an efficiency standpoint, the biggest effect on your battery life is going to be your screen. And while display tech is improving, it just doesn't feel like it's improving quick enough to make a tangible difference between these generations. Okay, so we're winding down the day now with some gaming, but do you notice something very interesting that's kind of been happening under our eyes with these batteries? We spent so much time talking about the pros that we've completely neglected the 15 plus, which is now squarely in first place. This is an impeccable performance. Ah, oh, I'm kind of torn about it though. It's hard to be mad about crazy battery life, but then at the same time, if you're someone who's paid extra to have the pro experience, is battery not part of that? I'd consider myself a pro user, and for me, battery life is so vital that if a company came on stage one year with their phones and they just said, we've made the battery last 30% longer, they could drop the mic, they could do nothing else and just walk off at that point. And that would genuinely be enough for me to say that it was a success. Okay, we've had our first casualty and we are about to have our second. Bear in mind that for this test, Wi-Fi is on, Bluetooth is on, and the screen brightness is pretty high. The phone speakers are off, so obviously the exact amount of battery life that you get will vary, but I've tried to calibrate it in a way that's more similar to a normal day in the life, as opposed to our past battery tests, which have been on the heavier use side. I can't believe how long this has been going on for. I am genuinely exhausted. <laughs> but what makes me feel slightly better is that when I do hit the hay, I can do so with my eight sleep pod after a pretty long trip to America. It has a cover that fits over your bed like any fitted sheet, and what you're seeing on these phones is the app that comes with it. The key perk being it's temperature controlled. It's set to my perfect temperature, so I don't need to worry about having a loud fan next to my face. And then as you go through the night, it'll automatically adjust this temperature to make sure that your body hits all the important sleep stages. And then it also tracks your sleep and gives you detailed stats about how you slept and how you can improve. Like, this is mine from yesterday. Let's not dwell on that. <laughs> It shows me how much deep sleep I had and at what point I was awake. And if you prefer a cooler temperature, but you have a partner who likes to sleep on a stove, you can set each side to different temperatures. It's expensive, but there's few things more worth investing in than your sleep. I bought this for myself a few years ago and genuinely to date, it's been one of the best purchases I've ever made. So I'll leave a link in the description and if you use the code BOSS, you will get an extra $200 off. Okay, time for the results. So the iPhone 14 is in last place with nine hours and two minutes. It goes without saying that this is not bad battery life. It's far more than you'd get on something like the iPhone SE and is enough for, I would still say, 80% of phone users. Then you got the iPhone 15 Pro, which did not last as long as I hoped and I expected it would. Likely the combination of a more power hungry chip without the bigger battery capacity of the 15 Pro Max. But equally, I have been using this phone alongside a 14 Pro and I found it consistently a little better, which is to say it's plenty for most people, but it's not the phone if you're a big power user. It's almost quite funny then to see that next, lasting over half an hour longer is the base iPhone 15. What do you think to this? I mean, it's obviously really good battery life for a base iPhone, maybe the best ever, but am I the only one who feels like if there's one thing that the pros should have over the base versions, that it is battery. Next up then, lasting basically an hour longer, is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I've used an iPhone 14 Pro Max for the last year as my main phone, and it's been, I would say, enough for my high powered needs almost all the time. There's definitely been a couple of occasions where if it had just lasted that extra 5% longer, I could have made a phone call that I really needed to, or got one more round of a game in before needing to charge. But generally speaking, I've had a good experience. And then the 13 Pro Max, which honestly has not once caused me problems. I'm not surprised to see it in front of the 14 Pro Max, since that also reflects my day-to-day -day experience with the phone. What that means though, is that yes, the 15 Pro Max is the best performing Max phone so far. This is an extremely strong run that it's had. And the result makes sense. I mean, the battery capacity on this Pro Max is a full 35% bigger than on the smaller Pro. So the fact that it lasts 25% longer, not a shocker. And hey, as a little sprinkle on top, I did also realize I left my SIM in this phone for the first few hours of this test, which will make very minimal difference when on Wi-Fi, but just for the sake of clarity, it probably would have lasted an extra five minutes. And then uh, what I did not see coming, the winner of this entire test, and by far the longest score I've ever recorded slash had to sit through, would be the 15 plus. And do consider subscribing if you appreciate the effort. This is actually such a lead over not just the phones that finished early, but also the Pro Maxes that for about 10 minutes after this test finished, I was unironically just sitting there contemplating putting the 15 Pro Max in a drawer and switching to this. This is absolutely absurd battery life and I am all for it. 